What's up, Orange fans? This is Alex Auksher, Artist Relations Manager for Orange. And today we are joined by Matt McJunkins, bass player for A Perfect Circle and some other bands. Um, so, Matt, <laughs> uh, it's great to see you, man. Thank you for being here. How is uh, LA during a pandemic? How are you feeling? Ah, like, got it, got it, got it. How much time do you have? Um, how much, how much of, I could just send you some new, some links. How about that? Okay. Um, Wait, links to what? I don't know. To how I feel? You would... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll make you a playlist. I'll make you a playlist. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> collection of what up, Jay? Greatest, greatest hits. Thanks for um, joining Matt McJunkins and I. All right, no, seriously, though, real introduction. Matt McJunkins is uh, a bass player. He's been doing this since he was 13 years old. You will probably know him best as the bass player for A Perfect Circle. Uh, he's also been the touring bass player and has contributed to albums for Pucifer. Um, and uh, you and Josh Friedel are, uh, have a band together called The Beta Machine. Jeff Friedel. Jeff Friedel is what I meant. I said Josh, didn't I? I was thinking of Josh Freeze or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I get them mixed up. They have similar or names. Jeffrey. They kind of look Jeffrey. the same too. So I prefer uh, Jeffrey, honestly. Jeffrey? I, as opposed to Jeff. Okay. Well, all right. I'll... I'll keep it formal then. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so no, but for real, real question to start us off. How are you doing? How's the, uh, how's the mental health holding up as a musician during a pandemic? I suppose like many others, you know, if you ask that question, I, I mean, everyone's going through various phases, right? So it's like, if you ask me that question now versus yesterday or two days ago, it might be very different right mm -hmm. um but man it's been a it's been a year huh i i'll just say this that's i'm f very grateful for the things that i do have and the you know and the because there's a lot of people far worse off than i right now you know so i can't really complain when you kind of put it in that perspective but um you know, there's there's a lack of doing, being able to do all the things that we usually would be doing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, like like a lot being of in, have, like being a full time touring musician. Yeah. So yeah. in addition to just sort of normal everyday life being weird, there's there's the lack of that, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. I was supposed to be. Uh, I had started the year on tour with Poppy. And so we did about a month or so in January, February, and then we were supposed to go back out. We were supposed to go to Europe in March, um, and then uh, obviously that that stopped everywhere. And then um, you know we were going to go overseas again in the in the summer and and do a run with the Deftones and Gojira here in the states. So all that's just kind of. You know, this is what every musician has been telling me, man. Yeah, every yeah, musician yeah. can run through everything that they're not doing currently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's you have plenty of time to think about it, right? But uh, you know, everyone's trying their best to reschedule things and be optimistic, uh, looking towards the next year. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all you can do at the yeah. moment, right? And and in the meantime, try to find other things to do, not just for work, well, but for what? your sanity. What are those other things and... that, that you're doing currently? Because um, because well, I, I mean, musicians obviously a lot of of, of them are pivoting right now. Uh, some of them are doing drive-in shows uh, just to buy time. I yeah. feel like some of them are taking uh, they're they're writing more seriously and recording things. So what what are you up to right now? Well, I'm speaking to uh, a bearded gentleman who's very handsome and very kind. Wow. Um, yeah. Thank you. Wow. Good morning. I have blue eyes. Evening. <laughs> Just please. That's the only thing that makes me attractive. <laughs> and this Roman nose. Should just, should just be one eye the whole time. <laughs> this. Um, I wish I could pull off that hair though, man. That is, <laughs> that is fantastic. Rock star hair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I've been, I've been, I have been writing as well. <laughs> are you writing, writing primarily uh, with the beta machine at the moment? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Jeff and I got together about a week before you know uh, things kind of really started to lock down here in the states. Um, so you know, so we, so we, yeah, we started uh, tracking some some stuff and and just kind of come up with some more ideas. I mean, we we had been working a little bit here and there whenever time allowed, but, but that was like, like, okay, ready? let's, let's focus. Let's like really get in it. And, and then a week later, I'm just like, so, so it's been kind of hard, but uh, to get together and, and do that, you know, especially when you don't know, like you're trying to, usually when you start writing something, you have some kind of loose plan as like, okay, we're going to write these songs and then, you know, get an EP or a record and then tour or whatever. That's kind of, Obviously, there's a big question mark on as far as timelines go for everything. So we we got together, and we're we're gonna keep getting together, and, and we've been kind of you know remotely doing some stuff. But he, you know, he, fortunate for us, and definitely for me, he has a studio called Secret Hand Studios up in um, up in the valley. So uh, we can actually get together there and work. So it's like yeah, and and you know, there's plenty of space. So. You can have other people, and and for the most part, uh, you know, he and I can at least get together and just just start messing with some like basic tracks, just basic yeah. ideas, because um, you know it's right over the hill, so it's right there. So, um, and he and I both had collaborated with some other people and um, finished a few songs. Actually, we haven't, we just haven't released them. Um, <laughs> Can you hear these kids freaking yeah, out? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> oh my god, it's the ki- it's kids in the basement. Oh my god. I'm gonna I So one thing I told him not to do, you guys, was don't scream while we were doing this. That's cool. It kind of feels like we're playing a show or something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it's like having like an audience. It's like a live yeah, audience. It's kinda like I think it, it's it kind of makes me feel like uh it's the bass solo right now and everyone's just talking. It's great. Well, wow. um, yeah. <laughs> as people do during bass solos, <laughs> makes yeah. me feel yeah, it makes me feel very homesick for my home uh, <laughs> job. Anyway, right. so I'm gonna yeah, hold on one second. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> oh, here I'm gonna here do it again. I'll, I'll uh... I said, don't go in the shed. I'm gonna narrate. Okay, we're better. We're better off now. Yeah, we're 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 good. I want to know what you said. It was loud. I, That's what I know. Mm, it was loud. Wow, <laughs> and aggressive. All right, seriously, back to you, <laughs> man. You, right, you, uh, you know, I, I guess the thing is this. I mean, the way that this whole thing has happened the last seven months of our lives. Uh, has just kind of drastically affected musicians in a different way as artists, you know what I mean? Um, and so there's just a, you know, I love to ask and find out what, what, how musicians have been taking care of themselves, doing what they've been doing during this time. And, and even more importantly, I think how it's influencing your music. I mean, yeah. everybody, you know, musicians write different kinds of music <clears throat> depending on different moods. And I feel like everybody's going through like, you know the, the the steps right now, and now we're probably all pretty pretty closely aligned at like a mildly depressive state where it's like Jesus, just get this thing back together, please. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I mean, are, are are you noticing any of that slipping into what you're writing? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I it, um, I think it might might be useful for probably a lot of people. I I think it could be at least for myself to sort of look back during this time and kind of try to remember how you felt maybe like look at each month and kind of cause, cause, it, cause you, it's easy to lose perspective, right. You know, yeah. um, with, with anything in life, but certainly, certainly this. And, and, uh, I think it helps to kind of go like, okay, like not every day is like the impending apocalypse, you know, it might feel like that sometimes for obvious reasons, but, I think it, uh, and, and writing a song is certainly a way to do that, right? Because you're capturing sort of like a snapshot of a moment in time. And this is how you felt generally, even, even if you're not writing about a specific subject that pertains to what's happening in the world, 
you'll still know like, oh, I was, I was feeling something that day. Shit. You know, just your use of language or how dark a song is or how upbeat it is or whatever. So I think it's, it's a useful tool in that way to sort of kind of, uh, I don't know, check your own sanity and, and just kind of see where you're at. But it yeah. also helps, helps to remember that like, oh yeah, like not, I don't feel like this every day, you know, like, cause it's when you're in it, when you're in that mode of like not feeling so great and not being so uh, optimistic as it is easy to do uh, right now, it's easy to, to uh, forget that like, oh yeah, like a week ago, I didn't feel like this, like, you know, you you find silver lining, um, of course, trying to help friends, trying to, you know, stay in touch with your family, loved ones, you know, do what you can to help out people who need help yeah. and try to find <clears throat> some way of, uh, in addition to work stuff, of course, there's, you know, I mean, meditating, things like that. There's, there's a lot you can do, you know, but it's also like, really hard to, to stay on that, you know? So I, I know a lot of people <laughs> are just kind of, you yeah. spend maybe like a month yeah. just like diving down a hole and then like a month trying to climb back out of it, then a month trying to stay there, then another month sliding back down the hole. And, I mean, there's no way to, to guarantee that you're just things, you know, you're going to feel great. How, how there's no fucking way that you can all the time. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but to recognize it, to just like, to remember that like, Oh yeah, like that's, that's okay. That's cool to feel like that for a short amount of time and yeah. just, and just allow it to sort of happen. And remember that you can like, you can feel a different way and, and things do I get better. Really appreciate your calm positivity. You know what I mean? I mean, it's either that. If or we did this an hour from now, I'd be psych like psychotic. Break. Throw I don't know which coffee. one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's me. Uh, my, <laughs> Yeah. You look just like you either just got done feel, finished yeah. doing yoga or are about to kick a door down. So uh, <laughs> it's hard to tell. I, you know what? Actually, uh, you asked me what I was doing. In addition to writing, I actually think one of the things I've, I've been doing probably the most is teaching. Mm. Um, I'm actually, can I, can I backtrack real quick? You got yeah. started at the Musicians Institute, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was actually interested in, in knowing... I like to ask everybody who went to a music focused school what their thoughts on music focused schools are. Um, but you're also a teacher now, so you're continuing the trend. So, I mean, you know, tell us more about that. Yeah, teaching and, and your background going to a, a music focused school. Sure. I guess <clears throat> and it's funny. Uh, that's that seems like such an obvious um, thing to draw a line from going to a music school and then eventually becoming a teacher. But I, I, I didn't start really, I mean, I guess I kind of taught a little bit here and there over the last several years, but it wasn't until, I mean, I mean, when I say the last several years, I mean, like, since I finished school and that was like 2004 or something. So since then I teach, I taught a little bit uh, throughout the years, but, but I didn't really start doing it like consistently until maybe a few years ago, or like four or five years ago. And, um, I think, I think the reason I started doing it more was, was the, the, uh, technology just getting good enough to where you could do it online fairly well, <laughs> you know, yeah. as far as like not having dropouts and, you know, things that just drop calls or weird delays or whatever. So it's a lot more consistent now. And, uh, I just kind of had my setup at home dialed in. So, so actually I've been teaching online on and off, uh, you know, usually just when I was at home over the last like five years or so. And, um, it's, I don't know, it's nice because, because it's, it, I can kind of schedule in things a lot easier. Whereas if I had to like go to different people's houses or if I had to go to like teach at a school, you know, I'd still have to get there and leave. And I don't know, it's just, it's a lot more convenient to just do it at home. Right. You just like be in your pajamas. If you want, grab a cup of coffee, go. Uh, so maybe, is it, is maybe, it a promise that if I take classes from you online, you'll be in your pajamas? Star Wars pajamas, probably. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you, you know, you, I take requests actually. So for, I mean, extra, you know, extra five, 10 bucks an hour, like 
no shirt or that's uh you have to sign a waiver for that but uh, <laughs> yeah we could talk talk about that uh, <laughs> you gotta go into the uh yeah it's like a there's like a there's a risk factor because you don't i don't know it's gonna be so bright that i might, right, right, I right. might actually hurt your eyes because of the, right. the reflective if your your screen's uh, too high res yeah or, or just my my uh untanned self that's been inside for seven months yeah who says knows? the says the tan looking guy who lives in LA. And, it's just and, this. And look at me. Look at me. This is actually this is the second episode of this show in a row that I've had to comment that I, I'm whiter than someone. Then the wall behind you. Matt. You're not gonna beat me at white. <laughs> it's the glow, man. I got this fancy light here. See? Ooh. Um but yeah, so so I going to music school was great for me. Um and I have a lot of friends who who have gone on to work a lot and, you know, sort of do the things that they love to do uh, with touring and session stuff and joining bands. We'll talk about um, talk about drawing lines between one thing to another. Mm -hmm. uh, you went to MI, uh, Musicians Institute in L.A., yeah. and then uh, you said you graduated in 2004. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, is Ashes Divide, is that your big break? You could say, yeah, that going... was the first. Yeah, that was the first. I mean, that's kind of how joining. Did, did music joining school? That band, can you can you draw a line there? Can you say yes. you, this this music school person to this music school person to this industry contact and so on? So you want me to name your big drop, break? Basically, you want me to name drop? Essentially, I, I'll doing. take name drops. Shit, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> this show's no, lame I've... without name drops. <laughs> uh, shout out to. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, I met Major Dad once, by the way, in a mall in Florida, everybody. Major Dad and I have hung out. That's what I say now. You hung out? I just out wanted a name drop. I'm sorry. That's very different. I have to name that's drop. That's very different. Did you meet or did you shake hands or did you like have frozen yogurt? Yeah, no, we, we hung out for like 20 seconds. I got his oh. autograph. Oh, sweet. I got Greg Maddox's autograph once. I wouldn't say Greg Maddox? Out. Yeah. Like the Atlanta Braves, Greg Maddox? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we hung out. Shining point in my uh, adolescence. In a McDonald's drive-thru up in Alpharetta, Georgia once. We hung out for a little while. Greg Maddox and I. J yeah. Hey, what are you doing at 3 o'clock today? I don't know. Meet me at the uh, McDonald's drive-thru in Alpharetta, Georgia. I mean, he doesn't know me, that. but yeah, we, we met. He doesn't know uh, that we hung out, but no. All right. I'm sorry. Real question. <laughs> Yeah, how did music school get you into an Ashes Divide? So when I was attending that school, um, at some point, while I think towards the end, like right, like maybe the last quarter or so that I was there, uh, Barry Squire started uh, doing a. He, he would show up and kind of do these sort of like a class where he would just give advice for like anyone who wanted to join a band. Like, okay, like when you're done with the school, what are you going to do? Like, you know, and, and I think a lot of people just didn't know what to do or like how to do that. Like, you know, I want to, I want to play in a band and tour the world. And, you know, of course you can start your own band. That's one way to do it and write your own songs and get there that way. And, or you can join a band that's already sort of, uh, established and and sort of already doing that sort of thing and if they need to hire a bass player for a tour or they need a, someone to join the band because someone quit got fired or whatever decided to leave for whatever reason they need to fill that gap so in comes you so in order to find yourself in that situation um you need to know who to who to call or who to talk to so he was that guy uh, for me, for so many people in LA, you know, mm -hmm. um, he was the guy, uh, the connector, would, everybody yeah, has a connector. Came, yeah. And, and he's been a great help to me over the years and, and so countless other people, but, um, yeah. So getting to meet him and, and, and speak with him. And, uh, once I finished school, I would just, I would go out for, you know, things, you know, he would be like, Hey, this band's looking for a bass player. I'm like, all right. You know, and, and I would go and see if I, if it worked out, if it was a good fit audition for the thing or whatever. 
and Ashes Divide was like the first band that really, I don't know, it just it just connected because I I was a big Perfect Circle fan, you know, mm-hmm. and had already so I already knew that music, and then. Um, but how did you when, meet when Billy? I, Billy Howard through, through that, just through that audition. Through through, through you so actually so, auditioned for Ashes Divide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so he was looking for um, just a full band of people that he didn't already know so so like just just sort of i guess unknowns as you would say or just just people he didn't that weren't already in his circle of friends or whatever so so but he was putting together the whole band so bass drums uh uh, guitar you know a second guitar player and keys eventually and so so all of us were for everybody in that band that was like the first band that we played in that was doing that it was like touring and like on a label and let me ask you a question do you think that uh in that kind of situation do you think that billy's thoughts were like let's get green guys who i can mold and do what i want with you know is that is that his what is that his thought process i mean why why would he choose to you know it, it you know to bring in the band members that way as opposed to finding people he already knew I don't know. I I I'm not sure. I guess you'd have to ask him that. But I I always felt like like doing that, you know, in in one way it's sort of like a film where where maybe they cast a bunch of people who He's the director, you know, he's the producer, yeah, director. It's yeah, his writer, thing. Everything. Yeah, so 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 if you have a vision or or you want especially for like a new project you know, maybe you want to sort of start from scratch in a way where like, there's not like, because as soon as you, if you have somebody in it, in the project that's involved, you know, they're like, Oh, I, I know I've seen that musician before. I'm familiar with them. They're in this band or they, they play like this, so like, okay, then that means that this band is somewhat to some degree, like this other thing that they're mm-hmm. in. There's, there's some kind of connection. So I think, in a way you can kind of break that a little bit by just having a whole new set of people. Like, I mean, I remember seeing, you know, like guys like David Bowie and stuff would do that all the time. Like sometimes name drop, name drop. (laughs) I never worked with him. (laughs) Wish I did. But, uh, he, you know, he would, uh, he would change up every, I don't know, every like couple records or every, sometimes one record to the next keeping it fresh completely change yeah everything touring lineup the studio musicians but like they would he would sort of form like a unit and like keep that unit together for that period of time Mm -hmm. and like they would just they would get super tight and sounded amazing and just recorded toured did the whole thing and then he would like change up the sound so drastically and he was like i just want to get some other people in here that have no association with this thing I just did just so that it's different. And sometimes even for, for just for the artists themselves, right. It's like, it's kind of like if you're working on a song too, you, you know, you might be like, if you're working on an album, say you're, you're using one DAW or one studio or one room or a certain mic or a certain guitar, one way to immediately just like, do the next record and just start over and do something different is to just change up the instruments you're using or change the room or change the people that you're working with. So I think that was a big part of it. Um, but yeah, so, so Barry Squire was, was the guy who hooked me up with that. Uh, yeah. And then, and then meeting Billy and playing with Ashes Divide, that was definitely like the first, like I said, first big, like established sort of band and tour and stuff that I did. And then that led to playing with Pussifer and the Perfect Circle and eventually Eagles of Death Metal. Yeah. Um, which is how I met you. Which is how you met me. Correct. Uh, <laughs> well, all right. So obviously Foreign everybody Champs, knows. name drop. Everybody, yeah, I get name dropped a lot. You're always like, oh, I know Alex too. Yeah, it's really impressive. <laughs> uh, so yes, you are in a perfect circle. Wait a minute. Uh, I just realized something. There's not going to be a Nam this year. There is no Nam this year, and um, 
If anybody who's watching, that's when that's when you get name dropped. It is. Like, it is literally my time. It's my four days to be just like Mr. Matt McJunkins here. <laughs> it feels like you're. It, it's like, it, well, so hold every on, day guys. Is, uh, I got a five fifteen <laughs> with. Uh, I don't know. It's thirty six hours because it's nine hours a day for four days in a row. It's thirty six hours of VIP meet and greet. That's what it is, honestly. Mm -hmm. And by the fourth hour on the first day, I hate it. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I, 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 look, I get. I, I've got good memories of Nam. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I really do. I have terrible ones as well. So yeah. Uh, I'm not disappointed, and it's going to save us a hell of a lot of money um, this year, which is probably right. important right now because everybody should be getting themselves in a position for uh, what could potentially be a huge second dip with a very, very long tail. And it's Back all based hatches. on the fact that the global supply chains are falling apart. So, <laughs> Also, it's I just blame it on NAM being canceled, honestly. It's probably NAM being canceled that caused everything to go wrong. <laughs> Even though it went wrong before name was canceled, I think they it was like a precursor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, you know, man, let's just get to some of these. I got we got a couple. Of, oh God, hell yeah, do that. that Vigo, the Carpathian. Brad, yes. What's your favorite song to play with a perfect circle? Vigo, Vigo. I haven't seen Ghostbusters two in a minute. Thanks for the inspiration. Absolutely, Tigers, Tigers Wood. What's going on there? Um, it's actually Tiger Woods. Oh yeah, yeah. But he's got this account where he, he does a pun on his name or a play on his name, and it's all about this boner, and it's Tiger's Wood. That's actually Tiger Wood, though. Who's the actor that played Vigo? I feel like I've seen him a few times, but it's I can't see him as anything. I believe else. he's dead now. Okay. Um, but the guy who with the the eyes, he is uh, he's still alive and kicking, man. That's who also, I'm, that's who also I'm Google about. search because I just I went for I went for Vigo. The first result on the Google search is Vigo the Carpathian real. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Well, he is alive in our hearts and our dude. Minds. There's Vigo the Carpathian dot com. What what is on there? No, dude. So I actually own a URL. Fuck this own... interview. Tell me what's on the lips. Uh, honestly, man, yeah, no one gives a shit about our music stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, it's just canvas prints of Vigo the Carpathian. That's it. Rad. You could just buy canvas prints of that. And, and that's amazing. only one size. It has to be like a huge. There's wall. three sizes you can purchase. Like the floor um, ceiling. Yeah, you know what? Actually, here, I can... Uh, I can do this. I can just share this, and then you guys can all. My birthday's in March, by the way. So just letting you know. Okay. Do you have like a cameo or like a you know account or something? Or you... you just send me the biggest print you can find of <laughs> straight to my of Vigo the Carpathian. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Chrome tab, Vigo the Carpathian. There we go. All right. So you can see this, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is it. This is an entire website. You go to Carpathian.com. <laughs> this, this is genius. No, no one watching or listening to this has... There's like five people of the two that are watching. Five people no. out of two are have no idea what look, this is. Look, Tigers Wood just said that he will send you a poster. So this guy is willing to purchase you one of yes. these uh, Vigo the Carpathian. What else can I get out of this chat? This is poster. great. Back to your real question, though. What's your favorite song to play with APC? But actually, you know what? Real quick, I got to bring this up. If anybody has any ideas for what I could do with BillMurrayIsDead.com, I own that. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and I'm sitting on it until the day comes. But I need to have it set up so that we can roll it out as soon as the as soon as it happens. You not know what's joking. funny is I, I, I bought, I bought a, do a couple domain names. Did you? Like earlier this year, and I don't even remember what they are. <laughs> it was the same thing. It was like some weird thing. I'm like, someday someone's gonna need this. I don't even recall what it was. It was one of those. I don't know how many, how many uh, ounces of tequila were involved. It's anyway, when you're drinking, that you think it's a good idea to purchase a URL. A hundred percent. And I've owned many URLs over the years. It's never gonna oh. go out of style. Then they just expire, and yeah. Um, favorite song. That's tough. I really, I really 
I guess it kind of changes from time to time. I think for a while it was uh, weak and powerless because mm-hmm. it took me it took me a while to just get the intro thing down um, because so the you like the challenge of it, and then once you yeah, figured it out, yeah. you were like, yeah, yeah like the, there's parts to s- some songs. It's always really fun playing those songs um, because, or what one of the reasons is is that they're not very repetitive. Um, you know, even, even if they, like, if you just listen to it and you're like, oh, the bass is just going to go like, like eighth notes or you, you, you might think that that's what's going on. Maybe hearing it all, all the time, but when you actually have to like go and learn the parts, you realize there's all these little variations that sort of just like kind of align with this kick drum here or this little guitar fill here, or this, like, you know, everything's just so, so well orchestrated. It was really fun to like dive in deep to that, you know, and yeah. like really like pick these pick these parts apart, uh, you know. And, and but but just so I, I would almost have to memorize some of these parts, like you're memorizing a language phonetically, you know, just like this part after this part after this part. Like it wasn't like oh yeah, the chorus is like this thing, and then the verse is this thing. It was like no, every like eight bars is like. You know, it's like memorizing like a very long Simon Says pattern or something. Yeah. Well, um, it's like it's you have to essentially learn it so well that it becomes your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your own it's thing. really, it's really fun. Uh, and yeah, so that that song for sure is is a blast. Uh, man, uh, thinking of you it was really fun. Um, to to another like kind of once again seeming seemed kind of like a lot of the parts would repeat, but there was always this weird, like all the, all the songs that I had trouble with from the, at first are the songs I like playing the most. <laughs> right. Maybe it's cause I just spent well, enough time working Well, alternatively on, you are, you know, you're credited on a perfect circle albums now as well. What's, uh, are, are you, what's your, uh, what's your favorite thing that you've, you know, that you've written? Um, uh, working, Playing playing bass on uh, buying down was really fun. Nice. Um, yeah, th- that was another one that I guess <clears throat> was same thing. There's a lot of like little like nuanced parts where once again just like little things that change, like trying to f- get the tone, especially like for for the live show. Mm-hmm. And that was a song that was worked on a lot, like while we were on tour. So it was really fun to kind of you know you you kind of every show you would at least for a while you would sound check and then have that process of like okay let's let's get into this song for a little bit like okay mm-hmm. let's just work on the chorus or let's just work on this part or whatever play through it and you're kind of like ah all right that was good but like all right, i know i can do something better there like the tone can be better the the feel wasn't right or whatever just kind of spending a little bit of time each day or every show day to kind of just get in there and, and really finesse those things and then have the opportunity to go into the studio and like take those things and kind of do them again there and then take that finished recorded version and then play that on, on the road as well. Keep going. I don't know. It's just like no songs, you know, any song, any artist ever puts out, um, they're never done, you know, like the, the recording, is what it's like, well, this is as good as the song could be for now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> the record's got to come out someday and or whatever, you know, there's, there's gotta be some kind of uh, deadline, but once it comes out, you know, that's like, once again, it's like a snapshot. It's like, that's that song at that moment in time in this studio or yeah. whatever. But then as, as you play it live, it still continues to evolve and change. And the way that people, you know, in the crowd react to a song, they're like, Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe we should speed it up a little bit. Like no one was do- moving or no one was doing anything. Like let's, you yeah. know. Unless you're a band that's playing to tracks uh, and a lot of tracks and just wants to play the song exactly like you wrote it and recorded it that one time. And never uh, change it ever again. Yeah. In which case, uh, I almost certainly hate your band. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate those concerts, Strong dude. words. Just the sterile atmosphere of a band playing it exactly the way it was written. It's so just, it's, it's just, I hate it so much, man. I can't stand it. I don't want to be in that audience. I want a band that can go out there. And like you said, I can hear a, a slightly different version of it. I can hear the version of it. They want me to hear at that exact moment in time. You know what I mean? 
Like that's yeah. a, such a beautiful thing. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> On the flip side of that coin, I have seen <clears throat> bands that I love that I've been listening to for years, not going to name names since I was a kid. And, and finally, finally got to see them like, yes, I get to see this band. Uh, I can't wait to hear some of my favorite songs. And then that one of those favorite songs is, they play it. But it's completely. Oh no, you're right. Actually, because one version. of my most horrific it's moments like... <laughs> in all of all of music, all, everything I've ever seen, ever the worst musical moment I've ever seen was when Bruce Springsteen came out and did uh, "Born in the USA" um, with a twelve string acoustic guitar. And it wasn't until the last ten seconds of the song that I even recognized what he was playing. And it's the only time I've ever gotten to see Bruce Springsteen play that ah. song. <laughs> and it was go. just him and a 12 string and it didn't yeah. sound like the song at all. Yeah. Cause, and you know, and I get it because for them, they've been playing that song for years and they're like, Oh my God, everyone like, let's change things up. Let's do something different, whatever. Totally get it. But you know what, you know, who, who's great at that of, of, of like the best of both worlds of everything we just talked about is the rolling fucking stones Ooh. they because they still play those songs the way you, you want to hear them but they still feel like greasy and different and like things might fall apart at any minute but still it just sounds yeah. right you know it sounds yeah. like them but it sounds live Dude, to, like, to, to create greasy in a forty thousand person stadium is such a feat of artistry <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it's also like the right amount of like, you know, some some of the guys are maybe greasier than uh, <laughs> greasier than others. You know, and I think that's a big They're part greasy. of it too. Greasy. Oh yeah. Trailer Park I love Boys. Oh, Randy Cheeseburger Greasy. <laughs> Good question here, Tigers Wood. Just thank you for being so uh, I uh, interactive, yeah. Tigers Wood. Yeah. Any artist on your bucket list that you would like to work with? And I actually want to I want to double down on this question. Give me two artists that super influenced you. Two artists that you wish you could work with. Well, one of them unfortunately passed away. It would be David Bowie. Um, super, super big part of it, of everything um, that that I'm into or listen to. But I, I actually didn't get into like deep into David Bowie until like like my like mid twenties or something. Um, because I finally saw him live and I was just like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I knew that I knew the hits and I liked his stuff. I liked the stuff I heard, but I never like owned all the records or like, I think I had like a couple of them. I had like Ziggy Stardust and you know, I had like a few, but man, I was like, Oh, I, you know, when you see a band that you, you maybe, um, have heard for a long time, but you never really dove into and you see them live and you're like, I know all these songs. And then you, it also kind of, there's something about that live connection where you go, oh, oh yeah, I think I really, I want to be a, more of a part of this. Like you wish that you had been listening to them for all of your life and you knew every song and every word or whatever <laughs> so that you could enjoy this thing even more, you know, like it would be like more, even more significant. But, um, but um, and unfortunately, that was the only time I got to see him live. But man, what an impact that made on my life in so wow. many ways. Wow. Everyone was so happy. I've never seen anyone that happy. It was at the Wiltern in, in like 2003, 2004. Everyone was so like on time in L.A. Like it was amazing. I I'm not kidding. Like no one was in the foyer, you know, like in the like at the bar, like. You know, yeah. usually you see everybody was in that concert. Nobody's Everyone trying to like be cooler seated. than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on time, like on time for the opening act, mostly too. Like, like so. It's like by the time he came on, it was just like full house, packed. No one was fucking around. No one was missing a second of that show. It was amazing. Um, well, Okay, Man. well, David Bowie uh, yeah, is obviously not somebody that you can yeah. work with, unfortunately. So who would you like to work with now? Man. Is there anybody? So, so many. I mean, Nick Cave. Nick um, Cave. That's an interesting I, first one to, uh, to come out with, though. Is Nick well, Cave a huge uh, influence for you? You know, I, I haven't, I didn't, like, grow up listening to him 
really at all. Same thing got into him way later. Um, but once again, it's one of those, I was like, Oh fuck, why haven't I been listening to this guy forever? You know, he's, he's amazing. I think, I think the more of a songwriter I became, the more I appreciated him. Um, uh, especially, you know, lyrically and that, from a performance standpoint, live, there's, there's no other, there's no substitution. Nick Cave? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I have, I have never seen Nick Cave live. Oh, it's great, man. He's just, he just has the What I've been told, man, hand. you're not the first person to tell me yeah. that. So it's great. Uh, I, like I mean, I and, and I, this shit. yeah, it's fantastic. And, and I just, he always just has a very unique, a vision or a unique take on things that I appreciate. Um, and, and the, and the way that he writes from like this very like character perspective, like sometimes we'll write as himself or like based on an experience, but like you just hear like, it's like a lot of like stories and poetry. You know, it's man, really it's, cool. It's really I, mean, I know there's other that, writers dude. who write like that, but he was the first one that like, I really connected that's, with. That's true to me. That's the most interesting way that you can write. I could never, I, I don't feel like I could write that way. You know what I mean? Writing from like an outside perspective, trying to get into someone else's head to create a vision from like, a, a, you know, a separate character. Yeah. Like, and that's just so, always so impressive to me. And I, and I, sometimes I look at music that's like, uh, it's, it seems so much me, my, I, right. myself right. driven, you know what I mean? And, and to see that, like to take a step outside of it. And it's almost like writing a novel. You know yeah, I mean? that's the same kind of attitude you have. Well, and it's it's also interesting in the way that you can you can never run out of things to talk about. You know, even if regardless of because if you're just writing about yourself or from your perspective and your thoughts on a thing, then <clears throat> you're limited to to just that one view. That's it. You know, but as soon as you can kind of okay, let me see through the eyes of this other person or this group of people or whatever, then it's like you. One, you're learning something new because you kind of have to research that or you have to try to understand where they're coming from or why they would do something or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I just find that really interesting and, and, and something I'd like to do more of. But, um, yeah, just a really cool, interesting cat. And uh, I love his the way he looks at things. Uh, James Murphy at some point would be rad. Not, LCD, not familiar. LCD's. LCD sound oh. system. Oh yeah, LCD sound system's great. Uh, Soul Wax is amazing. Um, you know who I want to work with is is uh, and and I've I've actually worked on songs or maybe like on like remix compilations that he's included is Alan Johannes. Oh, every time, <laughs> man. Have you heard his new record? But you know, you know all. You, you could work with. Yeah, him. no, I know. Of course, you can. He's 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 one of those people that's just like everything that I've heard that he does is is always so fucking cool, you know, yeah. and and different. It always changes, and it's always fresh and new, and uh, but also like really grabs you. You just like it's not like I don't know for me at least like it's. It's not like music. I can, I'll just like put it on like while I'm doing something. Like oh, it's like because it, it just changes. It affects my mood so much. I'm like, oh, I have to like just sit here and take this in for a minute or something. Yeah. Go on a long, you know, introspective drive somewhere or something. You know, and, to the desert. And I, yeah, <laughs> it's always to the uh, desert. Yeah, or wherever you know. But but I love. I don't know. I mean, and I'm not always. You know, I can't. You can't do that every time you put on a record. You know, you need some 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 other things but uh but yeah i mean that's why I like 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 soul Wax has become like one of the my more uh something I, I really listen to a lot in terms of in the realm of like anything that's like sort of electronic or whatever mm -hmm. those guys and those guys are always like mashing up sounds that are really interesting to me uh man i don't know there's too many this is this, okay this, this, well this, this, you know what here, here's a better question or not a better I'll question but a different question uh no, tomorrow Better tomorrow somebody calls you and you drop everything to go do that thing to play a bass in that band which band is that that calls you the beta machine no um your own music that's a fair <laughs> answer bud <laughs> that was a, that was a name drop and a plug at the same time I like that um i do actually, actually i like that a lot for for real I, i'll answer that question for real but also i will say that i i do really miss uh 
play because I have we haven't played any shows in a while. I mean, I'm, no one's played any shows, but like we hadn't played any shows since like last June or something. You know, the beta uh, machine happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so like, oh, really itching to to do so. Actually, Jeff and I might do some some kind of a something live stream something i don't know we're like we're like we gotta do something like you know just just to play again um um as far as projects oh you know well i know who i would really love to work with but i would never want to replace the bass player is peter gabriel oh. um, but if there was a way that like tony Levin, yeah i could just like i don't know sing backups or something or like play <laughs> Play second base, second lead base, spinal tap style. This, you know, dude. Uh, I got one of my favorite fingers. things I have of funk all. fingers. Dude, you know what I'm talking funk about? Funk fingers, bro. Uh, you can buy them fingers. online. They're they're on. They're like he has a website. Yeah, and I'm sure they sound really great with everybody except for Tony Levin playing them. Sure, that's a very good point. I tried. <laughs> uh, I actually, I actually, I got them because we were on this huge Peter Gabriel kick. Uh, uh, and like Peter Gabriel era Genesis, actually even like early Phil Collins stuff, uh, are, you know, early Phil Collins Genesis era. It's, it's anyway, all amazing. It's all amazing. Uh, and um, but specifically the the Tony Levin Peter Gabriel oh, Peter Gabriel solo stuff uh, is so incredible. And um, yeah, here you go. So so, so I went on a kick and I went bought. There's the guy. Oh. So this is this is my Instagram, which I just restarted after approximately seven years of taking off, uh, taking off on it. This is the one time I got a picture with uh, Tony Levin at, at Nam. I'd seen him around all the damn time, and this is the face I make in that picture, and uh, a pretty good uh, representation of the reasoning behind having a beard. That weak ass. That's... I look like Kenneth from Thirty Rock. So. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry yeah so yeah i mean dude first off i agree 100 percent. peter gabriel playing bass on that shit would be uh, incredible or just anything like the the um yeah that's that's another one of those artists that just kind of always continues to evolve and had always done things that were different every record always sounds different from the last from the previous but but always interesting you know, there's always like exploring new sounds and doing, you know, we were like, we were just tripping out on uh, a lot of his like experimenting with like using the fair light and stuff in the eighties. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were just, like sitting there like watching video, like, man, I don't, I don't know how we got that record done. We just sit there and go down YouTube rabbit holes all the time. But, um, I, at one point, so, so at sort of later on in the process of demoing the last beta machine record. And I think we had already started to record some of the stuff. I, I bought the funk fingers. I was like, yeah, I've, I don't even think I told anyone. I was, I just did it. And like, I kind of sat in my room at home and like kind of mess with them. And I just, I just couldn't get anything cool to come out of it. Like, <laughs> it's like i think it's like they got funk fingers in the back of like bass player magazine and you're like someday just, i'm gonna buy some of those yeah it's like this it's the equivalent of like i got karate magazine when i was growing up and, funk, <laughs> and i bought like throwing stars man it's like i'm not i can't throw these throwing well, stars cool. correctly they're, they you know they're they they sound cool i think on certain things but i think you have to one just be very comfortable and used to playing because they sound like I mean, when for me at least, because I had just put them on and like try to awkwardly play with them, it just sounds like really bad slap bass, you know, <laughs> just like like really it's so like, specific to one sound. Yeah, <laughs> you know what and, I mean. And even and I noticed like something he does a lot, or at least on a lot of those Peter Gabriel records, there would be like a cool blend of like there would be that attack, but like with something else doing the sub. So maybe you have like a synth doing the like low bass. But mm. the attack is coming from the that thing, or like I, anyway. So I tried in the putting, rig. I tried putting like a like an octave and a distortion and fuzz and do all this like weird stuff. And the coolest thing I could get was just like bah, 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 with just a bunch of effects <laughs> on it. And but there was no need. Like we already had other stuff on the record, kind of filling that space. There was no void to be filled by the funk fingers at that time. 
<laughs> Next record, 100% Funk Fingers. You heard it here first, folks. Straight uh, on trash. All right, man. I, you know what we should do at least before we get out of here? I should at least ask you about your bass rig. I mean, the, <laughs> I know. Here's the thing, everybody. Matt is not typically an orange endorser, right? I mean, we met through. I have a sick orange rig, though. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. Okay. But, um, you know, you, you play a lot of different stuff. And I'm sure that you're a perfect circle rig is, you know, is comprised of a lot of different components. So, can you uh, give us a little rundown on like some of what what your favorite gear oh, is, what rundown. you're using? Cool. Uh, uh, a quick rig rundown. Because um, <laughs> I, I don't want to bore people rundown. to death. Those things are great. Um, <laughs> let's talk about gear. Um, man, well, lately it's been my laptop. Actually, here here's the funny thing. Um, you know what's great is the uh, um, name drop plug IK Multimedia Amplitude. Yeah. There's orange amps in that. Yes, there is. And they sound killer for yeah. like if you if you gotta go direct and like you know you're you know why they sound you have killer. An idea it's the only the it's the only software package that we've actually endorsed and worked with go. to create. There you go. Yeah. It does and like like I say that with no like because I've never talked to you about that or that I just like I, I got the thing. I got the amplitude. I'm like, oh, there's orange amps in here. Great. Let's let's see how they sound. I was like, holy shit, this sound really good. Um, so so actually, yeah. So I started like messing with some patches in there. Um, it's actually really cool. But uh, man, and, and and some of those amps I have uh, are at the studio, so I can't. That's another reason. Like, oh, Jeff, let's just let's just make noise. I don't care. I'm just gonna plug in every fuzz pedal that I own and just like just not even play just turn it on and just let it like rumble and like feedback for like 10 hours or something while he just plays like a money beat you know like and just <laughs> that's the next beta machine record <laughs> um fuck that sounds really good actually yeah are you totally matt pike or matt mcjunkins <laughs> that sounds like uh that sounds like the recipe for creating a sleep album ah uh, i'm into yeah. it um Yes. Uh, so the yeah the eighty two hundred is cooler. Um, I really you don't like have that an eighty two hundred. A perfect circle rig though. No, the perfect circle rig is uh, Mesa Boogie four hundred plus. It's just it's about this yeah. big. It's and okay. We'll bleep that out. <laughs> it's no, the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing. Man, that thing sounds great. Um, with a. Uh, Ampeg uh, eight ten and also and then for for effects it's uh, fractal fractal axe effects because mm -hmm. you know especially especially for that show there's a lot there's so many like timed like delay uh, tempo effects not on every song of course but for the ones that there are I would just need way too big of a pedal board to cover all it would just or even if it was like off stage, you know, plug, it would just be a, a fucking mess. You know, yeah. you would just need so much, you would need a rocket ship for all that stuff. Are you so, controlling on stage or do you have somebody you trust, you know, tech off stage helping you manage all that? It's just there in front of the, the, the mic. But, uh, but I think, yeah, for every, every song will like switch, you know, just so you don't have to like run all the way to the thing just to change it to the next. Cause sometimes, the re one of the reasons that is if you're doing a guitar change for like a song that's in a different tuning or something, having it change, having someone else change it, uh, just makes the transition go a lot smoother so that you can, the song will change while you're changing basses. If I can throw the thing on and then like one, two, three, four, like I've had those moments where it's like, ah, you know, like the chords not plugged in quite soon enough. And like the song starts and you're like kind of there and like, ah, you know, so it's just saves you, you know, an extra few seconds, which I know it sounds silly, but you know, when you're watching the show and there's just like the song finishes and then it's just like 10 seconds yeah. of awkward silence, <laughs> you know, like yeah. it just kind of helps get rid of that, mitigate some of those problems, you know, of, of, of having a show that has too many gaps. So it just keeps things, right keeps the train rolling, you know? Um, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. 
that's that's pretty much it. For, for well, you're here to hear on the Orange Channel, everybody. Matt McJunkins, Mesa Boogie, uh, Amphead, <laughs> Fractal FX, man. Yeah. <laughs> no. But I sure do uh, love my orange. Um, <laughs> for real, is though, your man, is your beta machine cool. set up orange? Beta machine set up, man. We <laughs> I wouldn't. There there hasn't really been. Uh, uh, it kind of changes every tour just because it just kind of depends on the you know like if we're doing a local show here then I can like I can bring whatever you know but if we're traveling it's sometimes you have to save space and you don't have room for all the amps and stuff or especially like if you don't have a big crew where you know or a lot of time to set up like if you're the opening act you have to like man just okay you have like five minutes to soundtrack and then and then uh, or sometimes no soundtrack at all and then uh once the show once your show's done you have to get off so quick for the next band you know there's just no time but um right so not orange got it uh <laughs> just, that was uh that was my my politician in training answer yeah, by the way like, like a complete non-answer yeah, yeah no i haven't i have used orange <laughs> Fuck, dude, I, I mean, honestly, I love and very much miss blasting that fucking <laughs> inferno with, behind uh, with me. Eagles of death with metal. Eagles. Oh, my yeah. God, it's great. There's like, I had uh, uh, like a whole bass stack and essentially like a guitar rig yeah. running all at the same time. And it was just, it's great because I had, you kind of had it dialed to where the, the, the OB fuck is the ob 100 or is it the the ob 500 it was the five right yeah the solid the solid state yeah thank yeah. you um and and so i had the distortion like all the way up blasting through a guitar cab but the volume on like one or like not even one so when you're playing just like a, a dry bass part you wouldn't really hear it that much but as soon as i kick on a fuzz pedal <laughs> it would just go like ah Right on, man. I mean, the Obi One Five Hundred is a great amp for uh, for the kind of like a nasty, overdriven sound, and to run it into a guitar cab makes a lot of sense, actually. Oh, it's great. Yeah, and uh, and I would run like for like the main fuzz I would use would be the Maleco uh, Ass Master, but Ass Master, <laughs> Bass Master, such I'm a specific fuzz Ass sound Master. too. Oh, Nobody, dude. I okay. one of my favorite Nam shirts ever was the Maleco. Uh, it's a pink shirt. It's got a hot dog eating contest logo <laughs> on it, <laughs> which has nothing to do with Maleco pedals. It had nothing to do with Nam. And that's the attitude those guys have. That's how I wish I could market. I'll be honest with you, man. That's like my ideal. Those guys right, are yeah. awesome. That's the dude from yeah, Ministry, yeah. right? Yeah, Paul yeah. Paul Barker and Josh Holly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're up in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Uh, any, be... uh, you know, I look, man. I know we want to get out of here soon, but uh, any other cool pedals? No, that I'm you found staying, recently. I'm, I'm staying all day. Yeah, um, you know who's great? Uh, Stacks Effects. You ever Ooh. you ever heard of Stacks Effects? I have heard of, Stacks of Long Beach. Effect. Really cool. Um, they they make uh, there's a really good uh, reverb uh, tremolo, the crazy eight. Um, and this, uh, there's this delay pedal. V, oh, it's got like the weirdest name. It's like V V V O C. No, anyway, it's 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 like a dual channel. <laughs> <laughs> quick transition. Well done, Matt. Yeah, the uh, serious. That's like the non-plug plug. It has this swell, like a momentary swell uh, button on it. That's that's so. You can dial in to, to to be so chaotic and crazy, but also roll it back and have it be very subtle. But there's something about uh, having that momentary swell that's really nice, uh, and and having it having the option to sort of have multiple delays like feed into themselves. I think like having a delay pedal that can get really dirty and weird is is very nice. I, you know, there's there's a, there's a lot of great pedal companies out there. Earthquaker Devices does this really well where they make a lot of like very specific pedals, you know? Yeah. Um, there, there, there's so many fuzz distortions, delays, reverbs, whatever out there that I think now if you're going to make a pedal, it's got to do something 
it's got to have characteristic. Fuzzrocious, amazing. You ever mess with the heli heliotropic? I, I from Fuzzrocious. Oh, dude, it's, Fuzzrocious dude is the shit. I love wow, that guy. So yeah. good. Everybody's gotta yeah, check right, out Fuzzrocious. It's, it's such a yeah. nice little family company too, because you know you yeah. got like uh, is it Ryan? Ryan's wife yeah. doing like mm -hmm. art on the pedals and Jim, stuff. Yeah. And Ryan's yeah. designing amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, super cool, and they sound great. I mean, there's so many of their pedals that I, I haven't checked out yet, but uh, yeah, check out some favorites. orange pedals. Yes, I do. Here's the thing, everybody who's watching, Mamba Junkins, obviously you're a bass player. The only pedal that I think that everybody everybody who plays bass should try from the orange line is the two-stroke clean boost pedal. It is a pedal that has replaced amps on people's board. Or, I mean, on in people's rigs. So Tim Comerford was the first one that was like, give me one of those two. Name I want to a name drop. Boop. Here you go. I want to try Sorry. that pedal here. He got it. This. It's in his rig permanently. It's it, it replaced an amp, everything. Uh, yeah. Nate Newton from converge got rid of an oh, amp. Sorry. Because of that pedal. Yeah. Name drop. Boop. Here you go. You guys want a name? <laughs> uh yeah no but for real though man yeah that's that's the pedal man is this on a cue card right now yeah um <laughs> also don't forget uh two for one uh <laughs> fridays at uh <laughs> yeah at the steak hut save 15 percent off of no but uh that's that sounds great uh, uh wait so it's a clean boost the clean boost you know what man uh, I'm pretty sure I should probably send you one for your time today. So, Matt yeah. McJunkin, you yes, win a clean really boost pedal from Orange. <sighs> All right, buddy. I have taken up an hour of your time. I sin sincerely appreciate you being here. This was very fun. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you very much. Matt McJunkins of A Perfect Circle, The Beta Machine, Pussifer, Ashes Divide, all these other Eagles of Death Metal. Uh, you are a uh, extremely handsome, very interesting individual with a fantastic jawline. And I congratulate you on your hair. <laughs> I congratulate you on your beard. It's very, that's very, that's uh, very 2020 of you. Yeah, very it doesn't honest. come in here. You know what, I honestly don't think Sharpie. I would have made it in the wild, wild west because of the fact that it doesn't come in here. And I think that's the most important part for a man's beard. It's very Perhaps embarrassing. Orange, should go, orange can go into beards, the beard game. You you said you wanted to find you wanted to market things a certain way. Now's your chance. Mm -hmm. T-shirts with hot dog eating contests. Buy a beard, orange. Buy a beard. <laughs> yeah, beard replacement. Oh man. Oh oh yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna like, you know how you can buy like that. that like that foam that you can you can use for like packaging and stuff like. Like you put in like pelican cases and, and stuff like that, but it's like that, but it's beard. It's like actual human beard that people shave off and they just, you just sell it in bags. And they go like, yeah, I'm missing a little bit here. And they can just have a little, like a little beard with a Velcro strip. <laughs> just, just put it in. Thanks everybody for tuning in to <laughs> Artist Relations Corner with myself, Alex Million Oxford, dollar Artist idea. Relations Manager, Mac Junkins, celebrity bassist. Bye. <laughs> Bye everybody. Yeah. <laughs>